Hey everyone, this is Fish Forever and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to germinate these aquatic seeds for the carpet of your aquarium. This is my little pea puffer tank. I wanted to add some seeds in here because the bottom looked a little bit bare, so that is why I decided to get these seeds. So these seeds can be found on almost any aquarium type website as well as Amazon and AliExpress. The biggest pro that comes with this is by the end you will hopefully have a full carpet of whatever plant this is as well as saving as much money as you can. Typical pots of tissue culture plants will cost you around $10.99 US dollars but these two packs only cost about $6 on Amazon. So I suppose you could say that from a relative standpoint these are a lot cheaper. Of course this does not include the price for electricity. But in the end, this will generate the most amount of plant for your dollars. After doing some research on these plants and looking at the reviews on both Amazon and AliExpress, I found that these seeds were dying for a lot of people because they did not know how to germinate them properly. Some people will just expect these to grow by pouring them into the substrate, however that is not how a seed will germinate. To make this a little bit easier to understand, we're going to be thinking of the seed with the little cotyledon inside as a chick trying to hatch out of its shell. After an egg is fertilized, it needs proper temperature in order to hatch. Just think about it, you can't put a single egg out in the cold and expect it to hatch. Well, the same applies here with the seed. You cannot just leave this inside of the soil or substrate in your aquarium and expect it to germinate. Hence, why you cannot just pour this into an already existing aquarium where it will be submerged in water. These seeds need humidity, proper temperature, sunlight, as well as just a little bit of water in the beginning in order to get them going and germinate. So with that said, I'm going to be showing you everything that I will be using in order to germinate these seeds. The first thing you're going to need is a pot to put everything in. I'm going to be making three pots today with the six-piece ceramic and bamboo tapas serving set. Of course, you don't have to use this. You can use any old container. The second thing you're going to need is some fertilizer. I'm using Seacum Flourish, but any type of fertilizer will work. Some planted aquarium substrate. I'm using Seachem Fluorite Black, a spoon to scoop everything with. Something to transfer out the water with. I'm using a turkey baster. And the last thing you'll need is some kind of cling wrap. This is going to keep the humidity in the pot. At this point, you're probably wondering, well, what about the temperature? How are we going to germinate these with one of the included items you said? Well, that is where your aquarium light comes in. A lot of people will typically just put this in a cup and put it in a different tank with a heater, but I wanted to make this a little bit easier and accessible to everybody. So the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to put everything in the pots and just put it right on top of the tank where there's heat right here. The intention is just to use what we have in order to make this process work instead of adding too many things and making it complicated. Like I mentioned earlier, for the pots, I'm using these three ceramic bowls found in this six-piece ceramic and bamboo tapas serving set. I got this as a gift and I thought it looked pretty nice, so I'm going to be using it for the pots. Like I said, you can use anything such as a Tupperware container. Here it is, let's open this up. Then I'm assuming the ceramic bowls are in here. And then there's also this little extra piece. I probably won't be using it. All right, and let's see what the little ceramic bowls look like. All right, and this is how it looks. I really like the setup. These are very cute and dainty little pots that I will be using. So let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is fill these up with some aquarium substrate. So I've just filled these up about halfway and now I'm gonna go rinse out the cups. I've just rinsed these out and make sure to drain it as much as I could as well. Remember, we do not want to submerge the seeds, so that's very important. And now it's finally time to add the seeds. Let's cut this open. I really like how this baggie has a Ziploc on the top too. Looks like the static electricity is making it stick to the sides of the bag, but 
I'm going to be adding just a very thin layer to the top. Same spoon as earlier. All right, and here's how they look up close. They actually look very similar to the Artemia cyst in a couple of my videos ago. But let's go ahead and put these in now. Thin layer like that is perfect. This is exactly what we have right now. Now we're gonna put together some fertilizer spray. So this is one ounce of water, and then you're also gonna take a fourth of an ounce of some kind of nutrients. I'm using Flourish by Seacum, and pouring this into here. So it will be a four to one ratio, four water to one ratio of fertilizer. This is the solution of what we'll be spraying on our plant every day. So just screw this up and it's ready to go. After about three minutes, the seeds should have soaked up as much water as they could from the damp gravel. So now we are going to put a thin layer of dry gravel on top. All right, and this is after adding that extra layer on top. The reason why we're able to use the dry substrate is because the bottom is already pretty much wet. And so after adding this, the dry will soak up that extra moisture. Try to cover as many of the seeds as you can, but still keep it pretty light. Then you're gonna put about two spritz of this fertilizer water on them. This is just to make it humid and keep the area moist. Now at this point, a question may arise, why can't we just keep this right in front of the window? Well, there are a couple reasons. First of all, as you can see, it's snowing in the Pacific Northwest and it's actually very cold, so it would probably freeze these up. Another reason is even if you were somewhere very, very sunny, you might run the risk of cooking the seeds and having everything burn. That is why keeping it under an artificial light would be best. So I'm gonna be putting it directly under this light. All I have in here is some Rotala, some Water Sprite, and then some Crypt. So these plants do not need a lot of light, but if you have something like dwarf hair grass that needs a lot of light, I wouldn't recommend doing that. So the next part is probably one of the most important parts of this entire video, and it is adding the cling wrap. As you all know, evaporation occurs 24 hours throughout the day, and in order to combat that, we're gonna be putting some saran wrap on top of the pots to make sure that they stay humid inside. So it's just as simple as grabbing some cling wrap. I only need one little piece here. I could have actually probably cut this in half. I'll do that to save some cling wrap. So you're gonna take some cling wrap and you're just going to wrap this as tightly as you can to make sure to keep it humid inside. And actually, I do think it would be perfect to put two on top just for that extra protection. Make sure no air can get in, and then this is perfect like this. I'm gonna repeat the process for both of these and I'll be right back. All right, and I just got all of these tightly wrapped up where they're airtight. I see some condensation already forming on top, which is a good sign. So at this point, you would probably think, yay, now we're done with this, we can put it underneath the light and our seeds will germinate. Well, since we don't know the species of this plant, we're gonna be safe and germinate these in the dark. Germination is essentially the process of sprouting. We're just gonna be safe, cover this up for 24 hours and let them germinate on their own. Keep them in a cool, dark spot. This can be a closet, a cabinet. I'm just gonna be using the original box that the ceramic bowls came in. And I will see you back in 24 hours. Hello, hello. So it's been exactly 24 hours, one day. And now I'm going to be taking it out of the box and showing you the next step. Before these go underneath the light, we're gonna take our fertilizer water spray and we're just going to open these up and give it a light spritz. I would say about four little spritz of the water. All right, so this is what the seeds are looking like right now. Obviously, they don't look very different than yesterday 
But now what we're gonna do is we're just going to simply place it under our aquarium light. So I have three little pots and I'm gonna be placing it like this. Make sure you have a very sturdy base. And if you're making a bigger pot, you wanna be very cautious with this because of course you don't wanna break your lid. I'm gonna be having three like this, one where the light is directly above it, one where it's about an inch and a half above, right in between the center of them. And what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna use these three as controls. This one's of course, like I said, gonna have the light right over, so we're gonna see if it grows faster, theoretically. Something that you wanna take into account are the plants in your aquarium. So I just have all low light plants, java moss, duckweed, things like that. In this one, I have water sprite and some rotala and crip, so they don't require that much light. If your plants require more light, this probably wouldn't be the best method out there, but it still works. Just some other notes, you're gonna wanna keep these pots underneath the light for approximately eight to 10 hours a day. So I recommend doing this during the morning time when you wake up. And then the temperature that is optimal would be around 77 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That way, hopefully by the end, we can have a full carpet of whatever plant this is. And with that said, let's embark on this journey. Alright, so it's been about 15 days since I've planted these. The saran wrap is still the same since the beginning. The two on the right are from the puffer fish tank. And then the one on the left is from the guppy tank. So let's take off the saran wrap and see how these compare. Here is just an up close of how the one underneath the puffer fish tank looks like. Very green and looks very healthy. Here's the other one. And then to compare, here's the one that was underneath the guppy tank. It looks very healthy as well, just the little sprouts are smaller. So if you guys saw my last video, I had some Rutala, which has grown a lot, as well as some water sprite in the back and some crypt. Last week when I did my water change, I removed most of the water sprite and today when I do my water change, I'm going to put some of the Rutala in the back and then I plan to have these in the front. I don't plan on having it in my guppy tank at the moment. I think there's enough plants in here for right now. So let's go ahead and do a water change and put the Rotala in the back. Oh my gosh, after picking up all the gravel, look how many snails came up. I toss in about five to six every single day for my pea puffers and looks like they're getting a feast today. These are Malaysian trumpet snails, by the way. They're nocturnal, so during the day, they tend to dig up underneath the soil. Ooh, that one just got one. All right, so I just moved all of the Rotala to the back of the aquarium and I added some of the Crypt to the front. I reserved about one cup of aquarium water and now we are going to take the plant out of the pot and add it to the foreground of the tank. Look at all that root growth. That is seriously such a good pot and this will definitely grow. So this is what we're working with. Probably should have worn gloves, but it's okay. Wow. Okay. So what I'm going to do, since this is pre-washed, we can just put it directly into the aquarium. So I'm just going to put it, oh, that's a lot of excess gravel, but I'm just going to very gently place it like that. Okay, so this is what it looks like, just popped into the tank. Looks like some of the sprouts are wanting to go out, but wow, that is just, that's pretty incredible. So <laughs> this thing would cost about $10 in the pet store, so. The amount of money that we saved, plus we made three of them, is pretty incredible. Yeah, it looks like one of my pea puffers is very interested. Oh, 
she's eating it too. And those roots that we mentioned earlier, that's gonna grow very nicely in here. For now, I'm just going to have it sitting like this. I'm sure over time it'll kind of even out and grow throughout the entire tank. Now I'm just gonna repeat the process with the two other pots. Pot number two. Look at that up close. That is honestly so cool. <laughs> it falls apart pretty easily, so just be very careful. Have something underneath to catch the excess gravel. So it would be best to just plant this directly into your tank because it does not stay intact very easily. I think if you add more seeds, it might. So when you try this, add more seeds than I do. There we go. There's Peter coming in, checking it out. I want to be very gentle with this because I'm still not exactly sure what species of plant this is. If anybody knows, please leave it in the comment section below. I think I'll just leave it alone and let it do its thing. So there's two, now I'm gonna add one more on the very left of the aquarium. And this last one is actually the one that grew smaller sprouts because it was underneath the older tank light. So let's see if there's any difference in the way it looks. Pretty much just shake it and it'll come out easily. Wow, this is pretty astonishing every time I look at it. Oh, and this one, for this one, I think there were more seeds in it so it's easier to stay intact. So you can see all those roots on the side kind of forming like a barrier. This is how it looks. There's some brown spots from the fertilizer water, but it's fine. And this is the third one planted. These are the other two. And let me just arrange these a little bit more and I'll show you the final product. All right, just from a bird's eye view, this is how all three are looking right now. Ignore the biofilm on the top, doing the water change, so there's a lot going on, but this is how they're looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and finish cleaning the aquarium, add dechlorinated water, a little bit of fertilizer, wait a few hours for everything to settle, and I'll be right back. And just like that, two hours later, my tank is filled up clean and clear. And this is how everything is looking. I really liked doing this project. It only took about 15 days total and it did not require much work at all. The result, of course, is absolutely stunning. If any of you guys want to see any updates on this, feel free to follow my Instagram at Fish Forever channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!